Hey y'all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer, and for this video, we're going to be going over and covering my top five tips that helped me get through Lords of the Fall. And the first tip we're going to start with here is Vested Seeds. They couldn't be more important. I'm going to explain this and how you can save yourself a lot of trouble. So during my first playthrough, more times than not, I ended up not having a Vested Seed on me. And what would happen is I'd end up getting to these flower beds where you can essentially place what's considered a temporary bonfire, and I wouldn't be able to do anything. However, there is a merchant at the main hub that sells them for 1200 vigor each. It's worth stacking up on these, even farming a bit for these. They're absolutely fantastic to have because they can save you a ton of trouble and from having to go back really far. This merchant, by the way, will also being able to trade in your remembrances. They're able to do that as well. And Pieta Sword is a great start. I'm going to show off my build at the end of this video. And yeah, Pieta Sword is still good even after the nerfs, given the fact that it has a very long reach for what's essentially a short sword move set. It's a very solid weapon. Tip number two is there's this key that you can buy for 18,000 vigor at the main hub area, but you should avoid this unless you're a Radiance build. If you're a Radiance build, there's a very good hammer and one of the best catalysts in the game to find, but for every other build, it's best to wait to the mid game and have this key drop for free. Something that you definitely want to take note of if you're new. If you're not new, for me, I had actually bought the key the first time, and it's just not worth it. I was a Radiance build at the time, but if you don't know what's really there either, that's another scenario. Other than those two, though, specifically for Radiance builds, everything else you can get, you might as well wait to the mid-game when you end up getting this key for free anyway, because after you get to Upper Calrath, I believe it's called, the key will actually drop for free, and then you can go to all those places normally. Yeah, a way better option is just to wait for that key to be free later on. Don't waste your vigor, you're going to need it for leveling. Sure, you can farm that, it's not too bad to farm for, but mostly the enemies there are going to beat you up anyway because they're mid to late game enemies. So just wait for that key. And the next tip here is Umbral Farming. So Umbral Farming is an option to really stack up on Vigor. It's a great way to take on enemies. Um, here, by the way, is the Lord's class after the Infernal ending, and you can get a ton of Vigor by farming an Umbral. But it comes with a cost. A nice twist that they added, and I actually really ended up liking this, is that the eye will fill up and the multiplier will basically go higher at the same time you're going to get more vigor. Now, once that eye fills up, though, you're going to face a very powerful enemy, especially in the early to mid game, that you're probably better off avoiding. And for me, I'm going to show what happens, by the way, if you end up filling that meter all the way up. But for me personally, what I would do is wait until almost that point where the tough enemy came out and attacked or whatever, like right before it, and then went back and rested at wherever I was and then farmed again if I need it. It was just safer because the enemies get tougher as you go on. And then once you have that thing chasing you around, it makes it incredibly difficult. You're going to see that here. And here we have that tough enemy you're going to see on screen here in a second, and he's very difficult to deal with, especially in the early and mid game, even at the Lord's class, which is pretty tough. Definitely worth doing the Inferno ending, we're going to talk about that soon. But as far as this enemy goes, he can definitely easily kill you, and once that eye turns red, your farming is pretty much going to go really high, kind of max out. But at the same time, it's going to be difficult to kill all those regular enemies when you have this incredibly tough enemy chasing you around. And that leads us to tip number four, the Inferno ending. This ending is one of two, actually two of the three endings in the game, involve not cleansing the beacons. By the way, you will get locked out of those two endings once you cleanse a beacon, so that's something to be aware of. And that leads us to the Lord's class, which is one of the best classes in the entire game, if not the best class. So if you want to run through, not cleanse any beacons, and have a really fantastic class to run through the game with, unlocking the Lord's class is definitely recommended. Especially if you're like me and you're not the best at parrying and whatnot. I can parry sometimes, but overall I'm not the best at it. And as you can see on screen here, we can do a ton of damage as the Lord's class. Once you set your axe on fire, you have the Lord's axe, which is a solid inferno weapon. You're just going to get a lot of damage out of it. A lot of fire damage and a lot of power to start the game. So it's something I definitely recommend doing. I recommend going ahead, getting the Inferno ending, and unlocking the Lord's class. Now, you do have that really powerful Radiance build you can unlock with the Radiance ending as well if you do like, essentially, magic builds. But if you want a kind of fun, heavy-hitting class from the beginning and possibly the best class in the entire game, finish the Inferno ending and you unlock the Lord's class, and then you'll have what's most likely going to be an incredibly fun playthrough. And so far, I'm about halfway through on the Lord's class, and it's been really enjoyable so far. 
And with the Lord's Axe, we can do a lot of damage. This really is an impressive class and something to look forward to. So far, again, being halfway through on the Lord's class right now, maybe a third way through the game, it's been really fun, really powerful class. It's been holding up against the majority of the bosses so far while doing a good amount of damage. By the way, I'll mention this towards the end, but unfortunately being on console and everything, as far as respecking, it is fairly limited in Lords. I don't like the number of respects. I think the total that you can get is about four of them, but I am gonna work on my five top later game builds. I already have a second character on my third playthrough now that's basically going to go over all the different builds, top weapons that I can find, and then we're gonna post that probably sometime this upcoming week. So if you're interested in Lords of the Fallen content, be sure to hit that subscribe button because this second channel will be for Lords of the Fallen and my main channel, as always, will be for Elden Ring and will cover Elden Ring DLC when it's out. This channel essentially is going to be for just basically random stuff, but I'm really enjoying Lords of the Fallen right now, so I'm definitely looking forward to doing some content for it. It's been a really fun game. By the way, also be sure to comment on the video quality and everything. I'm doing this in 180p on like a standard TV. I know it's not the best thing in the world. I normally do 4K content on my other channel, but it just takes up so much space that I wanted to switch to this. And we're going to get to my build that got me through the game the first time with Bayetta Sword here. So this is on New Game Plus, and I'm going to talk about my last tip for this game, as well as my personal build that got me through my first run. It wasn't anything crazy, but it was powerful enough. It certainly was able to handle mobs. As you can see, it was very good at handling mobs. Mob control is something a Pieta Sword is excellent at, and then we'll go over the advantages towards fighting bosses and my strategies there too, as we get into the last tip. So the last tip on here, and probably the most broken item in the entire game, quite literally, that can make your build incredibly strong is the Forsaken Grenade. When you start fights with this, you can probably just run around and time out some bosses. However, for me, I find that boring. But if you start with a Forsaken Grenade, which is essentially a poison grenade, and you do get a lot of them, you can have them deplete their health, essentially, while you're waiting out time for attack, and then move in and attack them as well. And it just gives you so much more options in terms of taking on different bosses because their health is constantly ticking down so like here on screen i can handle the mobs or whatever she's going to take damage anyway and then we can hit her on top of the poison damage for a ton of damage it literally is the definition of a broken item basically they're going to constantly lose health poison is quite strong in lords of the fallen and then when you move in to attack them on top of that you're just going to see most of the boss's hp bar just completely dissipate this is on new game plus by the way she does have additional hp but as you can see it stacks together nicely to do good damage Hence the name, you will get this in Forsaken Fen. I think it's actually on your way as you open stuff towards the boss. It's a little hidden. There's going to be this area that you have to open up in Umbral, and then it's going to be hidden behind this little, I guess when you go through, it's to the right, and it's hidden in a square, small room, and you can pick up the Forsaken Grenade, and essentially right then and there, basically have one of the most OP weapons in the entire game in the Poison Grenades. Sometimes, if you're even struggling or having a hard time with a boss, you can just time out the boss, too. I mean, the grenades are that good, and I would say two out of every three bosses takes good poison damage. So this is definitely something that you're going to want to try if you're struggling at all. I recommend having that grenade on hand at all times, so any of the bosses in the game you can kind of just cruise through, and as you continue to do damage to them regularly between basic hits and whatnot, or if you're throwing in spells, their boss health bar is essentially just going to completely disappear. Highly recommend this one. Definitely recommended by me. It helped me throughout the entire game. My first journey using that grenade made life a lot easier. Now I'm going to go through my build. It was fairly simple for me. I used Pieta Sword. I ended up using the Forsaken Grenade mostly. I had Agony's Light, which has really high base damage. However, there is better late game catalyst. I had the Light Reaper armor on, by the way, which was really cool armor. As far as the armor itself in terms of defense, I didn't notice major differences between them. And then for this, we ended up boosting our Holy Posture damage. And then I went for stuff that wasn't damage-based. I went for more mana and then health regen because there's so many enemies in this game rather than the Holy Damaging Ring, which you can use if you're casting Radiant Spells. Just wanted to show off my first build and how I got through the game the first time. I didn't even farm that much. This is a really fun game, by the way. I'm going to continue covering it and do some late game builds soon, too, in the upcoming week or so. Thanks for watching, and be sure to sub.